Okay, this is now the Tarot Q&A number 21, and this is part one of two and maybe three. And it's called um, imp Tarot Improvisation in Action, partly because the last couple of videos I've talked about improvisation and how with the tarot, you know what a card shows or means, but you can't always use the meaning you learned to answer the question that the person asked. So what you do is you improvise. And I wanted to show you something. So the problem is, or not the problem, but in the last few days, I've been thinking about this for a couple of days and I would be walking somewhere or doing something and an idea would come to mind about a particular card and I would think it through and then I would wish I could remember it. And that that may be a familiar experience for you where you realize something about a card and you want to remember it because it was a good meaning or it was a good sentence or a good paragraph or a good thought, whatever it happens to be. The only thing is with improvisation, you're not supposed to sort of import stuff that you already thought. It's supposed to be in the moment or ideally it's in the moment. So I want to, instead of trying to, instead of writing things down and having them in a, on a screen over there and reading them to you, I thought I'll have to be true to the idea and improvise what I'm actually going to say to you. And the thing is, somebody in Romania had a question. She, she's she been studying numerology and is now recently interested in the tarot. And she wanted to know whether, or her, her quandary was, does she stick with numerology or does she study the tarot? So she did two Celtic crosses. First one was, what's your future with the tarot? And the second one, what's your future with numerology? So I'm going to look at what's your future with the tarot. But instead, of, because it's a Celtic cross and it's 10 cards and it takes a while, I'm going to divide this into two. So I'll do the first six cards and then I'll tell you the next four. And then the ne in part two, I'll look at the next four, but it gives you time if you want to practice the me or practice improvising and figure out what you might say with the four cards that, that remain. Um, and I'm going to have to look over there because I can't remember what the next four cards are. So question was, what's her name is Louisa. Um, so what's Louisa's future with the tarot? And the first, so it was a Celtic cross and the first card she got, and I'm going to hold it up rather than put it over there because I think there's value in looking, instead of me remembering what I thought or remembering what I know, I'm going to look at the card as we probably all should, because I'm thinking that looking at the card is what triggers the idea rather than trying to remember something from another time, which could be 10 minutes ago or 10 days ago. So the question is, what's your future with the tower? And the first card I get is the Six of Cups, right? So, you know, the young fellow, young girl, they're, they're so... With improvisation, you look at the card and you look at what's going on and you come up with an idea and then you improvise. You decide, do I want to develop this idea or does it make sense or can I do something with it or am I stuck? In which case, forget it and define something else. So by looking at the card, it shows that you know, maybe it represents giving and receiving. So in what way does giving, giving and receiving describe the atmosphere of the question. So is Louisa going to give to the tarot? Is the tarot going to give to her? That may be an idea to develop, but I have no idea what to do with it. So I'm going to reject that as a possible line of, of development. And then, so we've got love. So maybe Louisa loves the tarot. And remember, this is the atmosphere surrounding the question. So is the atmosphere, is is it telling us that Louise is anxious, afraid, worried, expecting the worst? Or is she happy, contented? You know, it's a different atmosphere surrounding the question. And so if it's an atmosphere of doubt and uncertainty, then difficult cards 
are probably going to be more difficult because you're starting off, you know, not knowing quite what to do. Whereas if the cards at the beginning show confidence and optimism, then if there's a difficulty later on, you'll handle it. So we've got the Six of Cups here, love, exchange. That doesn't do anything for me about the atmosphere starting the question. But then I'm looking at the background and you see the roof is in need of repair. So I thought, that's what I'm going to say about the atmosphere surrounding the question. You've got Louisa who wants to share her understanding and her knowledge against a background of disrepair because the roof in the building needs to be fixed. So it's as if it can be that Louisa in her own life, certain aspects of it have to be fixed or could do with some repair and update. And or it could be that the questions that, or the people who come to her for tarot readings, let's say in the future, um, their lives are in some kind of disrepair. And so the tarot can help them reintroduce balance and harmony, represented by the, the couple, because they're either in harmony with each other, right? So the atmosphere down to the question is one of introducing balance and harmony and affection into a situation that is need, is in need of repair. The second card um, is the what's the the opposing force? So what gets in the way of maybe Louisa study or developing an understanding of the tarot? And here we've got the seven of swords, right? So we get two swords stuck in the ground here, and the person's making off with five others. And he looks a little bit doubtful. I mean, a little bit sketchy. Okay, so we've got two swords stuck in the ground. So what, what, is it, what does the card show? It partly shows stability because the two cards are stuck in, uh, the two swords are stuck in the ground, but also change or movement away and rushing away. And so... If I'm going to improvise, I I could talk about there's Louisa wants to introduce harmony into a situation and there's a certain amount of stability. But I think I want to say the 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 opposing forces and the advice for Louisa is don't rush. Because the first, the fellow seems to be rushing off. And so because it's the opposing force, what gets in the way of introducing harmony is if Louisa rushes. So it could be that it's going to take her time to learn the tarot or to learn it to the point where she's comfortable and happy and, com and comfortable with the tarot and with herself. But the biggest mistake she can make is trying to get it all done tomorrow or get it, or get it done next week. It's going to take time, so enjoy the journey instead of trying to get to the end. The foundation is the five of batons. So what does this show? Competition. This is the foundation, so it's what she's building on. It tells us something about Louisa and the tarot in the past. Um, competition doesn't see anything to me. You, you may get something from that. So I say competition for this card and you may think obviously it's competition and, and you can take the idea and do something with it and relate it to the, 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 the cards that have come up so far. But I personally can't, so I'm going to ignore the idea of competition. But you look at it, you've got five different batons. So as if there are, maybe for Louisa, there were five important uh, ideas now I'm stuck, so I'm going to leave that. I'm going to improvise again. Because I look at the card and I think noise. It's noisy. You've got these young people and they're all making a noise to try and be the one that people pay attention to. And that's the foundation. Um, and so maybe variety is the key for um, Louisa, that... She's not, the, the, the tarot isn't just the tarot, a limited, isolated kind of course of study, but bring in 
ideas from all over the place. So her numerology can 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 be an influence as well. The screen just turned off, so I'm thinking about the time. The card, what the influence that's passing away is the Seven of Pentacles upside down. So this Five of Batons, the competition or the variety and the activity developed into the Seven of Pentacles upside down. So the Seven of Pentacles shows somebody thinking and pondering, but it's upside down. So I think Louisa is not sure what to do next. So this variety of the Five of Batons developed into uncertainty. So maybe what she does is focus. And instead of having five areas that she's involved in, pick one or two. She's maybe picked one, the tarot. So it's now time to pick more areas to study so she can add to her understanding of the tarot. And then what may come, this is a possible line of development, and what may come is the Ten of Cups. So her studies of the tarot may produce reasons to celebrate, right? Because you've got celebration, the parents here and the children dancing, and it's happy and contentment and things are going well. So this is all good for, is it a good idea for Louisa to study the tarot? And the answer is yes. Well, it could be because it's maybe. It's um, what may come. So she can have good reasons for studying the tarot and it will work out well. And then I was reminded, that's card number one, the Six of Cups, as if the young couple in the beginning have married and produced, well, you don't have to get married, but they've produced offspring. So her studies of the tarot are going to lead to something. She's going to produce children of it or she's going to produce um offspring, can't think of how else to put that, that will lead on, that will be, that will remain and that will, that will themselves develop into more stable or greater wisdom, whatever. Do you know what I'm getting at? And the last card is what comes next. So the, what, that was what may come. What will come is the Eight of Pentacles, right? So what will come is repetition, bit of hard work. Um, and also I notice here in the Seven of Pentacles, um, if you remember, there was one coin on the ground, right? And in the Eight, there's one coin on the ground. As if she takes what she got from before and what she already knows and thinks and she develops it. But she works it and reworks it and goes over it again and again because this card shows repetition. So I had this suggestion for people learning the tarot. What you do is um, uh, you, you, you've got one question, let's say, will I get married? And you turn the top card and answer the question. And then you keep the same question, but you turn the next card. So will I get married, the Four of Cups? Yes, maybe. Will I get married, the Three of Swords? And you, you give what could be an answer to that question based on that particular card. Okay. Um, the four, if, if, this, if this video stops recording and it runs out um, before, sorry, if it runs out before um, I tell you this, then the seventh card is the six of batons reversed. The eighth card is the Knight of Coins reversed. The ninth card is the Four of Cups reversed. And the tenth card is the King of Swords reversed. So those are the four cards, if you want to do this, for you to think about what you might say or how you, how you would improvise a Celtic Cross Tarot reading using those four cards for the present position, what may, uh, the influence of other people, hopes and fears, and the final outcome. Okay, um, I really need a clock in here so I know how long I've been talking. Maybe next time I'll get one. Thank you for watching and um, I'll talk to you in a couple of days. But think about the, what you would do with those four cards. Okay, bye-bye.